Hey guys, James here, back with another video. Uh, it's been a while, it's been a few months, but we're back with uh, and this monitor. So this is the Dell U2419H. So a few months ago, I actually did a video on the P2419H, and this is the U2419H. It's the ultra sharp. Now, I just thought I mentioned that all the time codes uh, and chapters are in the video description as well as along the timeline, so you can skip ahead to the parts that you want. Um, I will be comparing this with the P2419H as well as the U2719H if you're thinking of upgrading from that. All right, so while editing this video, I actually realized that this is gonna be way too long for me to fit that comparison into this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload that as a separate video, it's about 10 minutes long, to compare this uh, U2419H to the 17 version, as well as the P2419H. So the link to that is right here, you can click that, um, or it's gonna be in the description below. So I would suggest to watch this video first, and then jump to that comparison video if you wanna check out that as well. Now before I go into any monitor unboxing and, and setup, especially when it comes to Dell, I always like to go through uh, the basic terms. So you can see here it says U2419H, but what does that actually mean? So there is the prefix, there is the suffix, and then there's the numbers in between. So the numbers are pretty simple. The first two, num the first two numbers are how many inches? 24 inches, rounded up to the nearest number. The, the two second digits are the manufacturing uh, financial year. So this was done in the year of 2019 in terms of this model. Now the U at the front in this particular one stands for ultra sharp and the H at the end stands for HD. Now Dell actually uh, have a link uh, on their website that outlines uh, the terminology for all their monitors. So I'll link that in the description below if you wanna go ahead and look at what that is. Another question I'll quickly answer is why go with ultra sharp? What's the difference between, let's say, the professional U2419H versus the Ultra Sharp 2419H? And this is actually found uh, on the product page for this. So, Ultra Sharp, I'll just read it out. Your Ultra Sharp monitor is factory calibrated at 99% sRGB coverage to an accuracy of delta E less than 2. So, for pre precise hues right out of the box, plus with 99% Rec. 709 and 85% DCI P3 color coverage, you'll see true to life colors in video formats. So, essentially, this comes pre calibrated out of the box and it has 99% sRGB coverage. Now, that isn't the same with the P24 1IHs and below. That's why you're getting an ultra sharp monitor. Now before we unbox this, you can see that it comes in a very different box. Uh, the Ultra Sharps, uh, for this model at least, is, is, is traditionally black, which is uh, just, I guess, helps sell the premium quality of this monitor rather than the generic brown uh, for the professional series. Okay, so opening this up. So straight off the bat, at the very top, we can see the color calibration factory report straight out of the box. You don't have to really touch it because it's already calibrated. Now, if you do have a professional calibrator like I do, like a iDisplay Pro, then I'm still going to calibrate this to match all my screens. But if you don't have that, um, at least it is calibrated straight out of the box. So you can see here, every Dell is shipped incorporating pre-tuned standard model sRGB with average, with average Delta E of less than two. This helps prevent significant color inconsistency or inaccuracy when content is played on the screen. So this is just the report and it's really good that they have that built in. You have the general assembly guide. We'll put that aside for now and just uh, safety regular regulatory information. Now we do have some cables here. We've got the power cable. We've got the USB um, downstream cable as well as a display port cable. We have the base stand, which is, uh, I think it's slightly different actually. We have the monitor arm. And then finally, the monitor itself. Let's bring this out here. So again, this is the DisplayPort cable. This is the USB 3.0 downstream IC power cord. And I've got the different lengths uh, of, of the measurements for these as well. All right, so here we have the base and the uh, stand riser and super simple to put this together. So you can see you've got this little uh, protruding point here and uh, this recessing point. So all you wanna do is just make sure that the two line up like that. And you want to grab this little thumb screw and just screw that in until it's tight. 
and then just flip this down and you're good to go. Now you can see that the, the base of this one is super thin uh, compared to the P2419H. Uh, we can compare the stands later, but that's really, really thin. So we've got this stand here and we're going to uh, essentially attach this to our monitor. This is another really, really easy process. Dell have made it super easy. All you have to do is you see these, uh, these two little teeth. You just have to line that up with the two teeth here. So all you do is just on an angle, you want to slip it in and essentially you'll hear that click and it's attached to the monitor. Very, very easy. And then time to rip off the protective cover. And you can see it has an NG star rating of six, 46 kilowatt hours per year. So we'll take that off as well. Now, just wanting to go through a quick tour of the monitor. So first you can see that this is a Visa mount. So it is Visa 100 by 100 compatible, 10 centimeters essentially forming a square. The screws do come with the monitor, which is really handy. I'll be using those later. And then uh, you have the button to release the stand. You have a Kensington lock on the side here as well. Now we'll look at the ports on this monitor. So you can see we have your standard IEC power connector. We have HDMI input, display port input. Now this particular display port is actually display port out. So you can daisy chain these, uh, this monitor with another monitor, which is a really great feature. You have a headphone jack 3.5 millimeter out. Now to be clear, this monitor does not have a built-in speaker but it allows sound to pass through. So if you if you wanted to use this essentially as a headphone extension, you can. But be mindful, you have to select the monitor as your output on your computer, so your Mac or Windows. This is your USB 3.0 downstream, and you also have two USB ports there. Now, what are these USB ports for? For example, if you've got a wireless keyboard, or even a wired keyboard, you can plug it into there rather than having it to go all the way to your PC or your laptop. And you can even plug things like USB drives, hard drives, whatever it is. Now, on always on the left-hand side of the monitor, we also have another two USB 3.0 ports. And you can see that this has a special little icon and this is meant to in, uh, signify that this, this port is specifically designed for charging a device, for example, your phone or whatever it is. Now on the bottom right hand side of the monitor, you can see this is where you find your buttons. So your power on button and your four menu buttons, which I'll demonstrate to you later on in this video. And finally, you can see the bezel, the Dell logo is at the bottom and a very, very thin bezel on the edge. You do have the Dell logo at the back. We'll just rip that off. And there was also a little plastic uh, covering this, which is also a new stand design. Now on the bottom of the stand, you will find five rubber feet as well as this longer piece here. And that's just to prevent the monitor from uh, slipping, from moving on your table. Now at the back, <coughs> you'll notice here that it does have a hole and this is just for routing your cables to make it nice and neat and making sure that it hides behind this center shaft. Now in terms of the range of movement for this monitor, we do have very basic up and down, and that's the movement. In terms of height off the, the bottom, from the bottom, roughly four centimeters, all the way up until 17 centimeters. So the tip of the highest comes in at 48 centimeters, and then when it's at its lowest, this is 35 centimeters. Now, something that they've changed with this monitor stand is that the pan function is now built into the top of the monitor. So last time the pan function was actually on the base down here, but now um, they've gotten that and it's nice and clean. And the pan function is actually built into this top section here, which is uh, pretty interesting. I'm surprised they've changed that. But I think maybe it has given them a wider range of motion, as you can see here. That's the extent of the pan. And as you can see, the base isn't moving, it's just the top part of the monitor. Now you also do have uh, your standard tilt. So you have a, a somewhat of a range of motion of tilt down, and then you have a motion of tilt up. So for example, if it's down like this, you can tilt up. If it's a bit higher, then you can tilt this down a little bit as well. Now finally, um, this is also a really good thing about these types of stands, is that it does include a rotation built into the monitor. So all you have to do is just rotate it like that. It's not a 360 rotation, so you do have to go back to the center position in order to rotate this way. But very easy to rotate um, and 
not much resistance at all, which is pretty nice. So if you do a lot of coding, this is really gonna help you a lot because it allows you to see all your code at once in a vertical position. Now it doesn't automatically rotate, so you will have to manually change that in your operating system, whether that be on Mac or Windows. Now, just before we actually turn this on and go through the menu, I wanted to highlight some specifications of this monitor and you can see the specs down here. So it is an LED backlit LCD monitor. It is IPS um, and it is it does have 178 degrees viewing angle, both horizontally and vertically. It has a refresh rate of 60 Hertz. It has a response time, uh, standard eight milliseconds, but you can change um, to a fast mode for five milliseconds. It does have 16.7 million colors. Uh, it has a pixels per inch of 92.5 pixels per inch. In terms of uh, daisy chaining, it does support daisy chaining. As you saw bef before, they, they have a, a display port output which you can connect to another monitor that supports display port 1.2. So that's the specs of this monitor. Let's start this up and actually get through the menu. So this is the opening screen. So the first thing you are to do is to select your language. So we'll select English. Now we'll quickly just go through the menus and I'll kind of explain what each one does. So by default, these buttons are preset to different things. So this is your preset mode, the first one. So you have your standard, your comfort view, multi-screen match, movie, game, color temperature, custom color. So multi-screen match, I believe, is trying to match the different colors uh, depending on the different monitors that you have. And then we have movie, game, color, temperature, custom color. I, t and I tend to like to use it on standard. So you can use it on multi-screen match or color, uh, custom color. Usually those are the best uh, for color accuracy. Comfort view is more of like if you're reading a lot of text and stuff like that and movie and game is self-explanatory. We'll just leave it on standard for now. The second one is input source. So you can switch between automatic display port or HDMI. So we're using display port at the moment. And then this is your cancel button. This is your menu button. We have brightness and contrast, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you just go right and then you can uh, move this slider up and down. Then we go into input source. So we can uh, tell it to go to auto select um, HDMI or display port, or you can reset your settings for that. Now you have the color settings, so your preset modes, which we were looking at before, which is all this stuff. Then you have your input color mode, so RGB or YPB or PR. Now most of the time you're going to be using RGB, but if the colors look really funky, then uh, switch to YPB PR. That can sometimes fix the issue. And this is just to reset the color settings to default. Then when you go down, you have display. So you can choose what aspect ratio you want. So um, this is forcing it into a four by three. This is forcing it into uh, one to one. So as in whatever you've got there, we'll, we'll go to one to one and we'll keep it to the default wide um, or you can use the auto resize, but we'll keep it to wide 16 by nine as that's the ratio of this monitor. We have a sharpness setting, so you can increase, decrease sharpness, gonna leave it at 50. Now um, the response time, this is kind of what I was talking about. So right now set to normal, it's at eight milliseconds. If I wanted to switch to five milliseconds, I can go to fast. Probably gonna leave it on normal because I'm not really using this for gaming. So MST, this stands for multi-stream transport. Essentially, this is the daisy chaining function. So you can enable or disable that. We have menu, so we can choose uh, what, what language. Now we can choose rotation. So why would you wanna choose the menu rotation? For example, if you have it in portrait, now you can change it like this and then you can operate the buttons much more easier. So for example, if you have it this way or if you have it upside down, so if you rotate it this way, or even if you had the monitor completely upside down, you can choose it like that as well. You have the menu transparency. You also have the menu timeout. So currently it's set to 20 seconds and you can go all the way to 60 seconds. So one minute. Menu lock. So you can choose to lock different parts of the menu. So the power button means you can't turn it off and etc. like that. And the reset menu for that. Personalization. So these two are your shortcut keys, these two buttons here. So you can choose wh what you want it to be. So I'm gonna put this one as the brightness and contrast. And then the second one is the input source because those are the most common things I change. I rarely change the, uh, the presets. Now power button LED. So we can choose whether this turns on or off when it's on. <laughs> um, so just an example. So if I turn it off during active, that means this light turns off, but I wanna keep it on to make sure I know that it's on. And then the USB, we can also have an option where 
during standby, so when there's no signal going to the monitor, do you want the USB to be active or do you want it to be disabled? Most of the time you're gonna leave it off, but um, for example, if you have peripherals that require it to still be running, even when the computer is off, then you wanna leave it on during standby. And then you can reset this menu as well. Finally, we have uh, this stuff, so the display info. Um, so you can see the current model, the input source, the current resolution and uh, frequency, DisplayPort uh, compatibility and the uh, HDMI compatibility. The next one is uh, DDCCI. I'm not entirely sure what it stands for, but essentially what this means, it allows uh, certain information about the display to, uh, to be transmitted through the display cable into your computer. So this is really great, it allows you to use like the Dell software to control brightness, contrast, presets, modes in the software. So I would just leave this on. LCD conditioning, so if you've noticed that uh, you're you know, getting some burn-in pixels or you have stuff not working, this feature will reduce minor cases of image retention depending on the degree of image retention. The program may take some time to run, do you wish to continue? So if we uh, continue, so what this actually does, it will just cycle through different colors and it will kind of help to burn out that image retention over time. Now image retention is something you only really need to worry about if you're leaving something there for a really, really, really long time. I've never had problems with image retention, but if you do, then at least this is uh, something that you can use to uh, do that. So it'll just keep cycling through, so we're gonna cancel that. Next, we have the, the current firmware and the service tag, so I've obviously blurred that out so you can't see that and because um, that's unique to each monitor. We can reset the settings and then we can uh, do a factory reset of everything. So that's pretty much the menu and I hope that uh, gives you insight on what features this monitor has. Now even though this camera does not do it justice, this is just a very brief preview of uh, what to expect from the screen. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't really do it justice, but the colors are very vibrant. Um, the image is really sharp, um, really great uniformity of brightness and contrasting colors across the whole screen. It looks really, really, really nice. But obviously the camera can't do it justice. You just have to take my word for it. Now, another thing on which I want to highlight is that, yes, this does work on Mac and PC. I get a lot of comments saying, will this work on my Mac? Will this work on my PC? It will, and you can see just before, I was using my Mac to actually show you that image. So some of the Dell software may not work, such as like being able to control the contrast and stuff from the computer, but ultimately, it, as long as you get an image out, to me, that's, that's, that's all that's important. Now, a, a question I get a lot is whether this will run uh, like my PS4 or my Xbox. Now, theoretically, you will get an image. In terms of the audio, I'm not entirely sure. You should be able to get it because the Xbox or PS4 should automatically send audio through the HDMI, and then you should be able to get that audio output from the audio jack. Just plug in some speakers, plug in some headphones, and you'll be able to hear your Xbox or your PS4 sound or Nintendo Switch, whatever you're using. Um, now, theoretically, that should work. Don't quote me on it, though. Best to check with uh, Dell directly if that will work. You can make sure you switch it to the five milliseconds response time, the fast response time, and uh, it, sh it should work, uh, no issues. So I hope this uh, video has been really helpful for you in uh, knowing what you get with the out of the box as well as um, the features of this monitor. Uh, now, who is this for? Who should be actually buying a U24 Ultra Sharp 2419H? Essentially, people who really need that color accuracy, 99% sRGB coverage, and that great uniformity and the great consistency of colors and contrasts and brightness across this monitor. Really, really great display. And for the price that you pay, it's actually not too bad. Obviously, the P24 is gonna be maybe $50 to $100 Australian cheaper, but I got this on a good special deal. Um, so I paid $250 for my P24 19H, and this one I bought for $330. To me, I'd rather spend the extra, you know, uh, 80 bucks and get like a much better, higher quality monitor. So this is, this is who it's for. Um, if you have any questions at all, definitely leave them in the comments below. I try to answer them, um, all of them as much as I can. Um, if I don't know the answer, then usually I don't answer. But yeah, help each other out in the comments if you do know the answer. Now, the next video which I'll be uploading is actually this mounted on a dual bracket monitor arm that is stacked. So this one and the U24 
17H that I had. So I'm gonna be mounting that. So stay tuned for that video if you wanna see that because I've done monitor, dual monitor arms in the past, but they've been side by side. This monitor arm is specifically for stacking. So I'm really excited to show you guys that. But um, yeah, that's it for this video. Like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or any comments, as I said. Subscribe to see more videos, especially that monitor arm, and I'll see you guys in the next one.